Hey love, my name is Brittany Pollard and you are now rocking with the Everyday Intentions podcast, your source for real conversation centered around stepping into your personal power one intention at a time. This podcast is all about owning our voice, taking up space, expressing ourselves and moving through life at our own pace. You are invited to the magic. So let's roll. This is episode eight with Fatima Farmer, Step Out of Fear and Into Faith. Fatima is an amazing woman who's new to my world, but I knew upon meeting her, I wanted to have her on the show as a guest. I just love her energy. I love her spirit. I love her message to the world. And it's all about how important faith and spirituality are and also how important having a connection to God is. And I feel like this was perfect for the self-care series because I firmly believe that faith and spirituality are huge components of self-care. So Fatima was an excellent resource to pull on to share that information with us. Fatima is a workshop facilitator, conscious content creator, and the founder of Soul Beauty Chat, which is a self-care community. Perfect. It's a self-care community and podcast designed to empower women through faith infused resources, mental health support, coaching, and through access to wellness events. I love this episode because Fatima got super real about being an imperfect Christian and she also opened up about the different religions and spiritual beliefs that she explored prior to choosing Christianity. Within that, we also spoke about releasing the idea of perfectionism and adopting a spiritual practice that feels authentic to our lifestyles. For those of you who don't have a spiritual practice or connection to God, source, universe, or whatever you believe in, she gave some excellent tips on how to start. We also chatted, which was unexpected, about what it's like being a socially awkward introvert. So holla if you hear me. (laughs) For all of my fellow introverts out there, this is definitely for you. But we spoke about how to work through that narrative. Because being an introvert is amazing, but we have to know when we're using those tendencies as a form of going within to heal. If you are an introvert, you know that going out and talking to people and just, you know, being out and about is very exhausting. So you have to come in and maybe read a book or, you know, just have a quiet night and with some tea and just take a step to just go inward and take care of yourself. So we have to know when we're operating from that place or if we're allowing those introverted tendencies to really keep us in a place of hiding. And that's really when it's coming from a place of fear because we're afraid of being seen and all the enoughness will come through where we're not good enough or we're not smart enough or we're not talkative enough, all the enoughness comes out. So are you using your introverted tendencies to heal or are they keeping you in a place of hiding is what I really, really want you to listen to when we get into that part of the show. So this is a great episode with some really, really amazing threads to pull on. And I just encourage you to grab your journals and enjoy. What is up, my people? Welcome back to another episode of the Everyday Intentions podcast. My name is Brittany, the host of the show. And today I have the lovely Fatima Farmer on. Welcome, Fatima. Hi, thanks for having me. Hello, everybody that's listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Fatima, I'm really excited for us to connect because this is our first time actually having a chat. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually met two weeks ago through a mutual friend, Kat. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> love her. And I know I love her, too. She's going to be on the show one of these days it's just been like a scheduling thing with us so when it works out it'll work out um but yeah we were sitting down and then we all just started having a conversation Mm -hmm. about our passions and our dreams and I got to hear about you and what you do with your platform she has a platform called soul beauty chat Mm -hmm. correct yes and with your whole thing about doing it's faith right and mental health faith and mental Mm -hmm. health and And self-care yeah there it is there it is um (laughs) And you were just talking about self-care and self-love and how there's so many parts to it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, girl, I'm doing a self-care series right now on my podcast. Please come on. Mm -hmm. So that is how (laughs) we are here today. Alignment makes me so happy. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. So I would love for you to just go ahead and go ahead and speak about yourself to our listeners. Let them know what you do, all the amazing things that you're into. Because this girl has such a beautiful soul. I'm just so happy. (laughs) I'm so happy she's on the show. So I'll go ahead and give it over to you. Yeah. So my name is Fatima Farmer and I am the founder of the Soul Beauty Chat, which is a self-care podcast and community that is all about faith, mental health, and self-care. And I think what is really interesting about my 
community is that it's with it's like self care from a Christian perspective. I mm-hmm. think that's a super easy way to understand it. Um, I host workshops. I just got here to LA, so I haven't had one yet, but I'm looking forward to one in the future. And um, online workshops is something that I host right now currently. And um, I have the podcast and the community over on the Facebook page. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So with Fatima's background and everything that she does, we were just talking about how faith is a huge mm-hmm. component of self-care. And I love that you approach it from the Christian background, too, because yeah. I think that there's so many people who identify with that. And they're, they're looking because they hear all these words like the universe mm-hmm. and, and whatever, <laughs> right? Yeah. To each their own. Um, but I think it's awesome that you have that anchor to connect people and so that it can come to you and they're like, OK, right. she's speaking my language. Exactly. Right. <laughs> totally. I think um, I my journey was really interesting because I definitely didn't grow up in like a super Christian family at all. Um, and actually the way I found my faith and my relationship with God was through a relationship that I was in Mm. where my partner was actually very Christian and I was not, I was like, every time he bought up God, I'm like, I don't want to talk about God. Can Mm. we not talk about this? Like Mm. I just was so resistant to it. And, um, some circumstances happened in my life. Maybe we'll get into, I don't want to jump ahead, but circumstances started to happen that really like forced me to just like take a step back and to really ask those hard questions like what is my purpose what am I doing why Mm -hmm. am I here like I just started soul searching and that search led me from Buddhism Hinduism started at atheism and then like I found my way back to God you Mm -hmm. know and I think it's just I think that's something that I really appreciate about that journey is that it wasn't a linear path and I think that's something that actually a lot of people in my community relate to it's like I am not your typical Christian. Like, I'm just not what you think of when yeah, you're like, where you grow oh, up Christian, in it and that's right. it. Right. Like the perfect yeah. Christian influencer is like, I am not that. And I am quick to tell everybody, like, I am not that. So if that's what you're expecting, girl, this is not the place for you. <laughs> but if you're expecting just honest conversations, like questions that you may have when you're in church, but you never got a chance to ask, this is the place for you, mm. you know, where we're going to talk about the crystals and the universe and the sage, but we're also going to talk about Jesus. And yes. Oh my goodness. Like, yes. We're I can just clap to that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to clap so much, but I don't want to like burn people's eardrums out. But I love that you have a story mm-hmm. to where you are now because that makes it feel so much more relatable too. Because I feel like a lot of people, they are in that search, right? Of yeah. what feels right for me. Even for me right now, for me, it was a Christian background, but now I'm getting into like ATRs, like African religions, mm-hmm. right? And I'm like exploring Orishas and what and, and all these things that I just was never open to. Right. And now I'm learning about that. And I'm like, hmm, I, like I want, I'm trying that on to see how that fits. And yeah. I think that's beautiful that people can explore and see what works for them. Yeah. And they also have a home as well. Like, they, well, they can find homes, but yeah. with yours, it's like that Christian home where they'll be able to come to you with open questions and know right. that they're not judged. Like, exactly. I can't believe you don't, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, girl, I get it. I've been there. Let's have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's amazing. And that's, that's the type of community that I think the Facebook group has really grown into where it's like, at one point, I think I was trying to fit a mold of like being like this perfect Christian. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, that's just not me. And yeah. I'm just going to keep it honest with you guys and share that. Like, I doubt I have struggles. I question things in the Bible. There's still things to this day that I don't fully understand or believe. And I'm just so honest about that. But I'm like, even though I have those questions, I do believe like in Jesus Christ, you know, and I do believe that he came and was our savior. Like I believe that part. So I'm like all the other parts, I think in time I'll get to a point where I have full understanding. Yeah. But for now that's enough for me to continue walking towards it, you know? Right. And I think, but I think, um, the community is definitely a space where it's like, no matter where you are in your journey, you know, you can ask those questions and no one's going to be like, oh no, like we can't talk about that. And yeah. it's like, we welcome it all. Let's have a conversation about it. You know? Right. And you never know too, depending on where you are at in your journey, even if there's a story that you don't relate to right now, you don't know if in five years down the line, you'll be like, oh, that's what they're talking mm-hmm. about. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's beautiful that you keep it open. I also want to ask you what inspires you? Yeah. So I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Like 
being new to LA and like interviewing for jobs and stuff, I've, I feel like I'm just getting so many questions about like why I'm doing what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. you know, like in the interview process and stuff. And something for me that inspires me is just, I guess it comes down to three things. It's like creating, empowering and connection. Oh yes. Like those, those things for me are, I would say like my core values and things that inspire me and drive me they drive my actions they drive how I choose to spend my days who I choose to spend my days with yes um but I think in personal life and professional life I'm always moving with those intentions in mind yes yeah that's amazing I love that I wrote that down creating empowering and connection Mm -hmm. and I love that you mentioned intentions too because that's what this podcast is all about it's about creating and transforming and stepping into the lives that we want through setting intentions through taking those small steps and I had a friend on the show um Mandy and I believe that's episode number seven you guys and she talked about like setting up your value system getting clearer on what your values are And really leading with those values as you go throughout your day. So, yeah, everything you said, girl, yes. (laughs) (laughs) So Fatima actually just completed, well, you're in the process of completing a really cool journey, life Mm -hmm. journey. (laughs) And she actually just drove from New Jersey all the way to L.A. She moved (laughs) clear across the country. (laughs) And it's been about two months now? Yeah, two months. Two months. And for those of you, if you want to see, she actually documented some of her journey on her YouTube channel. And that was really inspiring to watch also. Yes. So talk to us about that. When when you decided to make the move while you were in the midst of it, Mm because I seen a video where you were like, y'all, I just don't know how I feel right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess backtracking to why I decided to make the move, it was definitely something that for years, like it was just this feeling of, I'm supposed to be somewhere else doing something else. Mm. Like I'm here in New Jersey. I have a steady job. My family's here. My friends are here, but I don't feel settled or Mm. I don't feel like this is it. Like I think maybe it's the sad in me. I don't know, but I've always just been extremely curious and I've always just been one of those people that's like. I understand that everyone is like comfortable staying inside of this box, this area, this job, but like what's out there? Like I always wanted to know what else was out there. And I think um, for me, it was just like this pulling of just wanting to explore. And I knew for sure somewhere warm. I knew for sure um, somewhere that allowed me to live a lifestyle that was more conducive to who I am naturally as a person. Like I mm-hmm. love being outdoors. I love nature. I love vegan food. Like yes. so LA just made sense. California yeah. just made sense. And I think um I just started visiting a lot. Like I came here the first time for Coachella back in twenty twelve. Mm. And I was like, okay, this is amazing. This but is it was the feel. like it was like vacation. So I was like, okay, let me come back. So I literally just kept coming back every year. <laughs> I came back every year since oh, 2012. Yeah. Okay, okay. And yeah. I was, I would make sure that if, if it wasn't a solo trip, I booked time in the trip to do something by myself. Mm-hmm. And eventually it got to the point where like, I would come and just spend a whole week here just by myself and just stay in different neighborhoods, explore, just live like a local to see if it really felt like home. Mm-hmm. And every time it did. And I think the last time when I came, it, it's so funny. Cause it was actually a, like exactly a year ago when I came wow. and I remember being here and just feeling so aligned. And it, it was just like this powerful spiritual thing where it was like, it, it felt so clear to me that I was supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. And it was like, that was the moment where I was like, okay, when I go back home, I am definitely like planning to make this a reality. And I think at that time I had already been out of that relationship that I mentioned earlier. We oh, were yeah. together for a really yeah. long time, but I think we were broken up maybe for like a year at that point um, or a little over a year at that point. And so that was also a catalyst, too, because for a long time, that was something we planned to do together. But then it was like once we split, it was kind of like, OK, I'm definitely doing this. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, sometimes holding. people or relationships, it could be a reason for not doing something right. you always wanted to. Do. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think once that happened, it was like my mindset shifted. And then when I came and visited that last time, I was like, this is home. Like the feeling that I had when when it was time for me to leave. I legit cried. Like I actually have a video of me getting emotional on camera where I was like, I was here and I was like leaving my Airbnb and I was just like, I don't want to leave. And it wasn't because I didn't want to go back to my reality or because it was like vacation. It was like, this feels 
feels like home. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I feel like I'm leaving home to go back to this place where I'm just where you were just raised. Time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, th- I think that was the shift. And then that was the shift for me on a mental level. But spiritually, financially, um, it it was like so many other things that went into it. Like, I think once I had that clarity for sure that I was going to come, it was like spiritually I had to get right. You know, like I had to really dive into God because I didn't really understand why I felt this Mm. reason to come here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like everything I know was back in Jersey. So it's like, I'm comfortable. This is where all my people are. I'm like, God, like I understand that I'm supposed to be there and I want to be there, but I'm also like, why? Like, what is there for me to do? Yeah. Um, And I think now that I'm here, it's definitely being revealed and it is definitely scary because it's like outside of my comfort zone. It's things that I've never done before. And it's going to stretch me, but it's like, it's such a relief to just have that moment where I'm like, this makes sense. I understand why you called me here now. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand it, even though I'm still a little intimidated by it. (laughs) (laughs) I understand it. And I'm accepting that this is the path you have me on. So I'm comfortable with at least walking towards it. The same way with my faith. It was like, I didn't fully understand it and it scares me, but I understood enough to trust enough. To just follow the breadcrumbs. Follow the breadcrumbs. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And I think too, also just you just making the decision to move. You're like, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Like what else do you have for me? And you said that you were intimidated also by what's coming to fruition. Right. But do you ever think that actually ends? I I don't think that intimidation ever Mm -hmm. ends, especially as long as we dream. And as long as we want to call things in, I think we're always going to be stretched in a way that feels scary. Right. (laughs) And I think, especially if you do identify as like a Christian or just someone that has a relationship with God, like Mm -hmm. I feel like God is constantly stretching us and it's like, if he's not, it's almost like, what's the point? It's like, he's, it's right. like, he serves no purpose if we're comfortable, you know? Right. And I, I remember one time, Ooh, that just gave me chills. <laughs> I remember one time a pastor, a pastor said, um, faith is just a theory if it's not tested. And that just stuck with me. I'm like, he's so right. Like if you're not being stretched and tested and pushed out of your comfort zone, sometimes it's like your faith is just a concept. It's like, right. you don't, if you don't have to activate it, then it's not being used and therefore it's not faith. Right. It's just you just trusting in yourself essentially. Yeah. And I've also read too, um, I've I've been reading a couple books, but especially with faith, it's only as strong as you allow it to be also. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the things that we have as well. Like we can have a Bible, whether or not we have crystals or tarot cards, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, when we don't have that strong faith, all of those tools can provide the type of power that they can should we believe in them too. Because it's like without that faith being activated, that scripture is useless. The going to church is useless. Yeah, Listening to the worship song is useless. It's like if you don't, if you don't activate that faith inside of you to believe the words that you're reading or to believe that encounter that you're having to be true and to be a reflection of God, then it really doesn't serve it's you. It's just like anything. reading anything else. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> it's like that meme I've seen online on Instagram. I don't know if you've seen it, but it was like me burning sage when the only negativity in the room is me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, yep, that's me. <laughs> yes. So I love that. I love that so much. And I also, I want to ask too, with you making such a big move and you following that faith and mm-hmm. you facing that imit- intimidation, I don't know why I can't say that word today, <laughs> but you facing that intimidation, how does it feel being away from your family? Yeah. Do you go through like separation? Uh, I don't want to call it separation anxiety, but mm-hmm. do you experience that? What is that like for you? Yeah, I'm actually really glad you asked that because I think like on like social media, Instagram and stuff, like people just see one side of it. So I feel like I've gotten so many messages like, oh, you living your best life, girl? And I'm like, I am, but there's also another side of mm-hmm. it, right? Like I do share some of it in my, like on my YouTube channel, but on Instagrams, like you rarely see that other side, you know? But yeah. there's been so many days, especially in the beginning. Like when I first got here, I remember the day my sister left, it was the day after we got here. And at first it just felt like the super fun, adventurous road trip, like sisters driving across the country. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yes, this is awesome. But then it was like, when I dropped her off at the airport and I got in front of my Airbnb, I was like, oh shit. I was like, wow. I'm like, I'm really here. This is real now. Like it's not yeah, vacation. It's not, it's not a trip anymore. Like 
I live here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) And I think that's when it hit me. And I just was like, the tears just came. They just rushed over me. And I just felt so overwhelmed with Mm -hmm. just like emotions and like questions. I'm like, God, like, why am I here? Like, it's just like, that's when I went deeper. And I think I'm so, so grateful for that though. Like, I think all of it was just aligned so perfectly, even where I was staying. Because when I first got here, I was in the Valley, which is far from everything. Um, And I feel like I needed that because I didn't have the luxury of like going out all the time because I wasn't nearby. You know, Mm -hmm. I I did have a few friends and stuff, but most of them live like in the downtown area. So it was like for the most part, I was spending a lot of time by myself, which is totally like my my normal frequency but it's different when you're spending time by yourself and you're separated from everything that you know because it's like you're not just by yourself you literally have to be with yourself yeah and I just had to like turn inward and I feel like that first month was so powerful because in all of those days where I felt sad or I felt lonely or just like missing my friends and family, it really forced me to get closer to God. Mm -hmm. And before I got here, if I'm being truthful, like everything was fine. Like I had a great job. I was making great money. I just bought a car. Like everything was just perfect. And I think it was, it was one of those situations where I had honestly kind of forgotten about God. Like it was like, I described it when I was talking to my friends is like, God was just like the homie. It was like, we checked in, we talked every once in a while, but I wasn't depending on God because oh, I yes. he provided everything I needed. Yeah. You know, all my prayers had been answered. So it's like, and how often do we do that? You know, we're like praying, praying for the breakthrough. We get the breakthrough and then we go back to just like, it's like, we forget about the things that got us to the breakthrough. Yeah. You know, it's like, sometimes your faith is what activates that breakthrough. Mm-hmm. And I think I kind of forgot that. And I just had gotten so comfortable in this lifestyle so that when I got here and I realized that I was like stripped of everything, it was like all I had in that moment was God, you Mm -hmm. know? And I just, I'm so grateful for that time, even though it was very sad at times and I felt very sad at times. I'm grateful because I went so much deeper in my relationship with God, like so much deeper, deeper than I even imagined I would have gone, to be honest. So I'm super grateful for that. And my friends are very supportive also like my friends and family are super supportive so that night when I had that breakdown like I just text them like guys I'm sad I miss you. <laughs> and they just like gave me virtual hugs and I felt better because I knew I wasn't dealing with it alone you yeah know? I, I do 100% believe in that and I asked you that question because I know what that can feel like but I also when I moved down here I was depressed but I didn't know it Um, But I also had faith at the same time that things would work out. Mm -hmm. So when I came down here, I'm used to growing up in a household full of people. Mm -hmm. Just my cousins always lived with us. There was six of us between like my sisters and my cousins. So we always had a house full of activity. Mm -hmm. Um, When I moved down here, my boyfriend would go to work and my son would go to school. It would be just me. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I, I had a personal training job, but I was only working in the evening. So I would drop my kid off at school and then just come here and be like, what now? And in doing that, I I, would, I just became depressed because mm. I was like, I felt isolated. I felt like I didn't know anyone. I felt like there was nowhere to go even if I wanted to go outside. Yeah. So it was like a really lonely time for me. And that's when I started praying. I'm like, I need help because I don't know what this heaviness is, this isolation, this loneliness. This is weird for me, mm-hmm. even though I am a natural introvert too. And I, I like my space, but right. I'm like, this is just different. Right. <laughs> and, it's like the difference between like, being alone and being and feeling lonely yeah and it's like those moments kind of bring that to light where you're like wait I thought I liked being alone, but you're like, this is like, yeah, this, this is too much. Different. <laughs> Something's different about this. Exactly. <laughs> this is too much. But yeah, I just, I just continue to pray for opportunity and pray for the right people to be in my mm-hmm. presence. I was praying for that. And even when I, I was praying for a job too. And lo and behold, I got a job through actually my next door neighbor. Wow. Yeah. She, Look she got that. me a full-time job. And so I was grateful for that. But then I was like, crap, how am I going to get my kid to school? He goes to school in one city. My job is in another city. Mm. They start at the same time. What am I going to do? I didn't know what to do. But right at that time, I think it was a week before I was supposed to start that job, a friend of ours moved in and had to go to work that way anyway. So he was like, I'll take him. And then I had someone to pick him up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, thank you. That is amazing. Right then and there when I needed him, I'm like, okay, thank you. That's okay. That's like, it's so, I love when moments like that happen because it just shows like 
the magic of divine timing. And it's like mm-hmm. when something is supposed to happen a certain way, it's like, even though in the natural, it may look impossible. It always lines up. Yeah. Like literally God, impossible. my sister always says, God, God's not going to play you. He's not, <laughs> he's really not. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that. And even before I had got that job, I had, like I said, I was praying and I wrote down in a journal exactly like the amount of money that I would need to make it. And I kid you not, Fatima, I got offered that same amount to the dollar oh, working at this goodness. job. So there was just so many synchronicities. And I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, I'm listening. Right. Like, Do you need me to make it any clearer? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is yes. amazing. Yeah, it is. And I encourage for those of you who are listening, just look back on the theme of events that happened in your life and just really pinpoint things that were divine, things that you know could only have come from God. Because I think, too, what you mentioned earlier and you touched on is sometimes we get so comfortable that we forget that we have this divine support also. And we can't just only call and ask for help when Mm -hmm. things aren't going our way, right? There's a reason to get up and praise and be grateful and and just spend time too every single day. And right now I'm in the midst of building a relationship with my ancestors. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you do ancestor work, but I just... Okay. I just got into it. So even with that, it's just, for me, it's recognizing my ancestors are here walking this Mm -hmm. path with me. They're here supporting. But even in all the readings that I've got done, they're like, you don't spend enough time. So you have all of your stuff on your table. You have Mm -hmm. everything on your altar, but they they want you to spend time. And that's the same thing with God. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's so important too, because like at the foundation, it's like, if you have that solid relationship, with God or whatever you identify as God, it's like if everything around you started to crumble, nothing about your relationship with God would change. Mm -hmm, Like you would mm -hmm. still get up and praise. You would still get up and pray. You would still get up and ask for support. It's like it has become just a part of your practice Mm -hmm. to have this connection with God. It's not like dependent upon if things are good or, or if things are bad. And I think I've realized over time that that is like the most important thing to me is like having that foundation because then you, you can't be shaken up that easily, you know, right. Like yeah. Things may not work out the way you want them to, but yes, having that gives you a peace, literally a peace that surpasses all understanding where you're just like, I don't know how this is going to work, but you have that trust and that connection that it makes whatever you're going through a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. I just did an interview um, earlier today, right before ours Mm -hmm. with a friend of mine. And he was saying how he, one of the worst situations that happened in his life is he just had a baby. Mm -hmm. And at the time his mom got evicted from her house. So he inherited Mm -hmm. his brother and sister and he had just quit his job and he was seven months behind on his rent. And so he was like, I should have been worried about all this stuff going on, but he was like, for some reason, I just wasn't. Mm. I just knew that things were going to work out, even with my landlord coming to my door, asking for money and me not having it, just using the little money I did have to feed my family. He was like, that was one of the worst situations that I've ever been through in life, but it didn't shake me. And I was like, that is so powerful. Yeah. So I just want to pull this back and then connect also creating, having faith, creating a faith-based practice and how that ties into Mm self-care. What advice do you have for people when they want to start out with creating a faith-based practice? Yeah, it's a great question. So I would say to start with identifying like where you are currently, Mm -hmm. you know, like just have a really honest conversation with yourself. I like to use journaling as a tool to really like unpack even the things that I haven't said out loud. Mm -hmm. It's like once I type it out or I write it out, it's like now it's real and I have to face it. Mm -hmm. So what I would encourage just starting there and just asking yourself the simple question, like what is my current view on faith and on, uh, on God and really just honestly share whatever comes up for you and see what comes to the surface. And then I would say from there, um, once you've kind of assessed that, then figure out, um, what's the next piece of that? I think a great place to start is really with just like some type of a routine or a practice that you can instill. So I would say a really simple one is like breaking it up and into breaking up your time into smaller chunks. So let's say if you have 15 minutes in the morning that you can spare to devote to this new practice, 
maybe use the first five minutes of that to just listen to like worship music, just like set the tone, you know, Mm -hmm. like just to get your mind off of, you know, what you have to do. And then maybe the next five minutes is you just journaling, but journal and, and, and really talk to God, you know, like if you don't have a relationship with God, it's just like, Hey, I know we don't know each other that well, but I want to get to know you. And it may sound silly, but literally it's like I view my relationship with God as any other, like any other person. Like you and I sitting here talking is the same way I have conversations with God. It's not Mm -hmm. like, oh, dear Heavenly Father. Like (laughs) I I don't do all of that. I'm just very like, thank you, God. Like I just want to talk to you about X, Y, and Z. Or I, I talk to God in my car all the time. Yeah. You know, so I think it's like finding a place that works for you, but just setting aside time is the most important. Mm-hmm. So, and then I would say if, maybe if, if you stick with the 15 minutes, that last 15 minutes can then be devoted to prayer. You know, so you have your your worship music, which is just like your praise, essentially. You have your communication portion. And then prayer, I think a really important piece of prayer is like, spend part of that time talking to God, but then the other part of it should really just be listening, you know, like say everything you need to say, but then take a moment to just sit in that atmosphere that you've created and just see if anything comes up for you. Cause oftentimes for me, after I've had an exchange with God, whether it's listening to worship music or journaling or whatever, like when I take that moment of just stillness and I just sit in that, sometimes I get the answer to the prayer or I get the mm. clarity that I'm asking for. Sometimes it's so, sometimes it doesn't happen right away, but a lot of times it happens in that moment of stillness right afterwards. So I think that is a really easy way to start to incorporate it. And then I also have a ton of like really practical videos for people who are like, well, how do I do this? How do I read the Bible? Oh, how do I perfect. Do that? Like okay. I have ton because I was that person. Like I'm always that person that's like, okay, that's great. But I need like a step-by-step on how yeah. to do it. So <laughs> you're that person. I have like She's a bunch of videos you. and podcasts on that too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. You're so welcome. we have worship and then communication through journaling mm-hmm. and prayer yep. is a perfect place to start. I love that. So if you guys are listening, please take the time to write that down. Cause that's beautiful. And then I also would say another thing that you could do is as you go throughout your day, just look for those signs also. Mm -hmm. So you never know, you might have journaled something or prayed on something and you might see like a random answer on a billboard or, you know, you might see a sign or someone, you might be walking past someone and they like blurt out the name of a street that you have Mm -hmm. been thinking that you might want to move to. So listening to those things and then coming back and when you have time or, or typing it in your phone, just like journaling on that, like, oh my gosh, today I was walking down the street and I heard this person yeah. say Berry Street, right? And I'm mm-hmm. like, I've been wanting to move there for so long. Like maybe that's a confirmation for me. Yeah, totally. It's just really opening your perspective and opening your senses yeah. also. Well, I, I think that's a great tip. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. So what have you got coming up? What's new for you right now? Yeah, so I am working on... Um, so a few different things. I'm actually working on a online workshop that I'm going to be hosting for the month of October mm. with my sister, actually, who is a life oh coach as gosh, well. Cool. She was in the car with me in the videos, if you guys uh, happen to watch it. But she's a life coach. OK. And we actually posted a video of like advice to our younger selves in our very long car ride. And it just got a really good response. And people were so inspired by what she were share- she was sharing. So she was like, hey, I've been thinking about this like workshop. Maybe we can do it together. And I'm like, this totally makes sense. That like so it feels cool. like an extension of that conversation so I'm gonna be launching that soon and then um, also like I mentioned events I'm gonna be hosting some in-person workshops here in LA hopefully in the fall Um, but in the meantime everything like all to stay connected with all of that is just on my website soulbeautychat.com and then on my Instagram Fatima underscore farmer okay awesome and we're gonna link all that stuff in the show notes Okay, well, Fatima, it was so amazing having you on the show today. I feel like that episode was, this conversation was just so easy and so, (laughs) it was so juicy. And I love that you shared your experience with your move and, Mm -hmm. you know, just you going with through the different motions of your relationship with God and the, how you've been strengthening it and your advice to others. So that's awesome. And I really encourage you guys to check out her YouTube, um, 
one thing we didn't get into today, um, cause I hadn't planned for it, but I want to have you back to talk about okay. is about life as an introvert and oh being socially awkward. Yes. When I was watching those, I was like, Oh, okay. She is speaking <laughs> all of my language right here. Too. Oh my gosh. That could totally be a whole episode. I'm so excited about that. I love talking about that. Yes. Yes. I will have you back because I feel like so many people can identify with that too. Mm. Um, there's so many people I talk to also on a daily basis. They have all these dreams and goals, but they're so afraid of having like a human interaction yeah. and they don't know what to say and they feel awkward. Mm-hmm. And I still go through that stuff too. And I'm really working to shift that story of being the quiet one, the oh shy gosh, one. Yes. Yeah, I'm working on that. So even this right now, right? You and mm-hmm. I, I bet you once. I'm like, hey girl, come over here. <laughs> Like what? An introvert would never. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that takes a lot to do as an introvert. <laughs> so I, yeah, I definitely want to have you back to talk about that yeah. and shift in that story. And Something I actually would like to share yes, really quickly is please. like how, how that kind of ties into it. I think that in a weird way, that label of being an introvert kind of birthed like a self-love journey. Like mm. I was already on this, this journey of faith of growing closer to God, but as I'm growing closer to God, I'm noticing, like we talked about earlier, God is stretching me, right? He's yeah. like forcing me to do things out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And then that's making me question like, well, why is it so hard for me to do this thing that's outside of my comfort zone? And I'm like listening to the stories that I've been telling myself about, well, it's because you're shy. It's because you're quiet. It's because you're reserved. And I'm like, the more that I started going through this list of things that I thought that I was, I realized that like all of those were just labels Mm. that either I had given myself or people around me had given me and I had just started to embody. Yeah. But when I really like kind of stripped that down and I just looked at who am I as a person without fear, because that's really what kind of stems a lot of that behavior. It's like, who am I without fear? When I really pull that mask back, I realized that I I can be those things, but that doesn't define me as a whole. Right. Like that doesn't make up me in my fullness. I think that just is a piece of me, but a piece of me that I chose to live in almost because it was easier because I didn't have to get out of my comfort zone. Yeah. You know, and I think that was almost like the catalyst of like my self-love journey. I remember I posted a video that was called Thank You But Goodbye. And it was literally like me sharing a very vulnerable moment of just like journaling to myself of just like saying goodbye to that version of myself. I was like, this doesn't serve me. You know, it's like God is literally forcing me to become this woman that is comfortable, like reaching out to someone that I just met or talking to a stranger because that is, that's who I have to be to navigate the purpose that God has given me. Yeah. But I had to actually say goodbye to that person and be like, this is not, this is hindering me from growing into who I'm supposed to become, even yes. though it's scary. It's like, how to say goodbye to you, sis. And yeah. it's like, although I still have my moments where I can be introverted, it's like, I don't allow that label to It's control. not from a place of fear anymore. Exactly. It's not it's from a choice. place of fear. It's literally a choice. It's like, if I'm being it's introverted, nourishing. it's because my energy needs to be recharged. Right. Not like I'm at an event and I'm being introverted because really I'm just afraid of what people will think of mm-hmm, me mm-hmm. if I'm being weird or if I want to talk about <laughs> like something deep and everyone else wants to talk about something light. I'm like, I want to be the weird person. So I'm just not going to say anything, you know? Okay. But, that's me. A hundred percent of the time. But I, I think <laughs> I had to. I had to look at it and say, like, is this actually just fear of rejection or is this your energy is just depleted? Yeah. And I think but that was like a huge catalyst of me understanding that, like, I needed to really learn to love myself, Mm -hmm. you know, and doing that to me was through self-care. You know, it's like through the journaling and through the affirmations and through all of the work, you know, that's how I get to that place of loving myself. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Who am I without fear? I encourage everyone to write that down. Also, (laughs) this is another one of those episodes where you'll need a notebook. Yes. Um, Because that's powerful. I think even if you even if you don't write it down, if you just sit back and you close your eyes and you just think, who am I without fear? What pictures comes to mind? Where do you see yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself living in a different country? Do you see yourself speaking on a stage do you see yourself building a school for children and leading that school what do you see when you allow fear to dissipate in your life yep I I think that's like a great place to start and then naturally your mind is going to go to okay now what do I have to do to become that yes you know and that may mean like 
dropping a label. Yeah. You know, it may mean like letting go of this identity that you just gotten so comfortable in and just being like, okay, if I want to get to this version of myself, that means all of these things have to change or grow or morph. Like I can't stay the same person and be that person at the same time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we've got to learn to let it go. And I think that it is more comfortable to do the uncomfortable things, right? Than to just sit back and wish that you had. Oh my gosh. It's like, that is like painful to me. That That's that is so painful. Painful. I'm like, it's just <laughs> agony. <laughs> I've been there so many times where I'm just like, I want to be that person that's like out living my best life or like dancing at a party or yeah. like talking to everybody. And now it's so crazy because I have so many moments where I'm in settings like that and I'm like, I'm that person. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, she Full was circle. here all along. Yeah. Like this Fatima oh was here all <laughs> along and I just had her buried underneath yes. so much fear, but she was here. And it's like, I don't even, I don't, those fears that I had before aren't even there. I'm not like, Ooh, this person's going to think I'm weird. I'm just like, so what? Like, yeah. I'm just like, they, they probably are going to think I'm weird. I am weird. Like, I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> they can but think that, whatever they want. You can't yeah. control other people's but thoughts, literally, nor should you want to. I think that came from understanding that definitely came from understanding, like that I had put myself in a, a label because of fear, but also like my relationship with God, I feel like really helped me to accept that. Cause it's like yeah. the more I'm meditating on God's word and I'm reading that, like we were created and formed in our mother's womb before we were born. So it's like when you compare that and then you think about, and I'm afraid of being rejected, it's like those two statements can't even coexist yeah. together. It's just like, that doesn't align with what I believe to be true. Right. It's like, yes, I may be rejected, but I was created from the creator of perfection so it's like with that as a truth it's like that rejection is so small now it's like a drop in the ocean right absolutely so yeah I think those those two components of the learning to love and truly accept myself and also my relationship with God really just like transformed me as a person to where I'm comfortable now like existing as the Fatima Mm, that needs to like be present to walk out this purpose, you know? Yeah. Like, and I, I think eventually, like, if we chat in like, I don't know, a few months or a year from now, the same very thing that I'm like, oh, this is, feels intimidating because I know God has me on this new path that feels so much bigger than me. Like, I'm going to expand again. Yeah. You know? That's and why that, I said it never yeah, ends. <laughs> it never ends. It's just a cycle. It's, it's like, going to, it's going to be there all over again. Yeah. But so it's, it's like getting comfortable being uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but then also doing it with intention, with the purpose, with faith, with God on your yes. side. Oh yes. I'm, I'm really in the midst of that transition too, about just like shifting that narrative of always being the quiet one. Mm-hmm. And that was my reason for starting the podcast. Oh wow. Yeah. At first, at first I was caught up in the numbers and who's going to listen. I'm like, honestly, I don't care about that. This is for me. This is yeah. for me to come from being behind the scenes and just start using my voice more so that I can work up to being on platforms and hosting right. workshops and doing all the things that are on my heart because that's specifically what I want to do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that we all have something in our hearts that we want to carry out. So mm-hmm. really sit with that, you guys, and and follow that if there's something that you're interested in or you want to do even if it is speaking and you're scared you can start by just writing something down and standing in the mirror and just Mm -hmm. learning how to do a delivery or do a pitch or just start even with starting with who am I when you really sit down and you think about like who am I versus who I want to be right merge those two together and then start working from that list too Mm -hmm. and just start slowly taking action so This is huge. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. That is big. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me to. I'm glad that I'm able to share. Yeah. Yeah. I can see. I know that so many people are going to relate to this Um, just because we're, we're all here trying to grow and trying to transform, especially people who listen to this show. They're really interested in taking that next step to connect deeper to themselves. So I love that you just like kept it real. Like, yo, this is me. And that's what I love about your energy too. It's like, you're not trying to be this beam of perfection. I know you said that was you back in the past, but that shit gets tiring. It it does. I got tired so quick. I'm just like, look, (laughs) 
It's like it's doing all this for doing. what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I still curse sometimes like a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> I still listen to trap music sometimes when I feel like it. Like if I'm working out or something, like I'm just not a cookie cutter version yeah. of anything. Like I have tattoos, I have piercings. There's so many people that are just like, that's like, that's not of God. And I'm just like, but I am of God. Like, yeah. Light is light regardless of the package that is in, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think, um, I think being comfortable in that and just being like, Hey, this is what you get. I think a lot of people can relate to that because then they don't feel like they have to be perfect yes. in order to start a relationship with God. Cause that's yes. really what it's about. It's like, I, I want you to see me and be like, Oh wow, she's flawed and she's imperfect, but she's still walking in her purpose. Right. You yeah. know, I want people to look at that and know that they can do that too. They don't have to be perfect or have it all figured out to take a step in the direction. Yeah. I love that you touched on that too, because when I really started diving into my spirituality, I thought that it had to be done a specific way. Me too. It's like no cussing, yeah. no listening to rap music. You need to put yourself on a, on a strict routine mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I got so burnt out, even like in the way that we dress and stuff. And yeah. I'm like, this is too much. Yeah. And I think, honestly, what I've learned is that um, over time, right, like, because the goal, of course, is to be more like Christ, right? Like, we are advocates. We are ambassadors for Christ. And the goal is to be more like him. But that's the goal. That's not where we start. You don't have yeah. to, like, when you make this agreement to have Christ be a part of your life. You don't have to be perfect at that moment. And honestly, we're never going to be perfect, but you don't have to be your version of perfect at the moment. You literally just come as you are. And over time, the most beautiful thing is, is that God will convict you and you'll slowly start to notice that things will shift. Like, although I still listen to all types of music, it's like certain things. It literally doesn't even feel right in my body. Yeah. So I choose not to listen to it. Like I love Tupac to the death. Like I love Tupac so much, but his music sometimes it ignites a part of me that makes me feel angry because mm-hmm. of his content, what he talks about police brutality and like the injustice. And it's like, as much as I love him, I choose not to listen to his music as much because I know that it's going to trigger ungodlike feelings you know mm. it's like it brings up emotions that does not make me feel like my best self or makes me feel like I can be that like it makes me feel angry sometimes so as much as I support it's like I support in different ways you know maybe it's by reading his poetry instead you know yeah. it's like by having a collage of pictures of him on my screen <laughs> like, <laughs> like I celebrate I celebrate and 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 enjoy those things in other ways sometimes mm-hmm. because I know that it's not feeding my soul mm-hmm. um and drawing me closer to God so I I think but the, the beautiful thing is is that literally God will convict us and over time the things that you you may have felt like it was so hard for you to let go of or you're just like that's just who I am like I'm just this type of person and being a Christian isn't going to change that it's like you'll start to notice over time that just certain things just won't even be engaging to you anymore like the closer you draw to God the further you draw away from some of the things that you used to think made you who you were yeah like naturally it just happens yeah, I get it. Yeah. With me, with me and rap music in general, I, I listen to it because I still like it, but it's mostly when I'm in the gym because I just need that Same. ego. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just need that ego. And you just need to know you're a bad bitch. It's so funny. It's like when I'm in the gym, I'm listening to Megan Thee Stallion. Oh my and gosh. And then when I leave, I'm like back to my worship music. I'm like, this is that, like outside of the gym. I don't want to hear this. To be yeah. Honest. Like, everybody knows. I love Megan. I it's, love her. It's like, it's fun. You want to dance. You want to feel sexy, but like on a regular basis, that content does not align with who I am as a person yeah. or where I'm going. So it's like, I don't want to hear that all the time. Yeah. You know? but yeah. I think it's like yeah. a time and a place for, for certain things. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm totally like that too. And even when it comes to the heavier music, like Tupac and bu- police brutality and like all those things mm-hmm. for me personally, it's not that I shut it away, but I think I get overwhelmed with feelings of sadness. Same. And then I'm like, this is reality. This is really happening, but I feel so overwhelmed. It's like, how do I help? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's kind of like some projects I have coming up too, with just addressing that anger that many black people feel with the current climate of not the current climate of society, but how society's always been. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do we do with these feelings of anger and sadness and grief and all these things that 
build up in us. Mm-hmm. And even if we feel like they're not there, they still are with what we see on TV and how people are treated, even mm-hmm. in real life. Um, it's like, I, I don't know what to do with all that, but I'm in the process of learning right. so that I can help others. So that's like another component of it too. Yeah. But that is very true where music can draw out different parts of us. And sometimes you just don't want that part activated, right? Exactly. Sometimes you're like, nah, this is not the time and place yeah. to do this. And sometimes totally. it's perfect. So. And even, I'm glad you brought up like with TV and stuff too, because I think there's, it's similar with like TV and shows like, I'm very like I'm not one of those people that's like oh I just don't engage in that I just don't watch that but it's like I'm open to it and if I watch it and I feel that overwhelming sense of whether it's sadness or even like some stuff is so sexual you know and it's like you have this ver- this urge now of like sexual energy and you're like I don't know what to do with this you know yeah, what I mean yeah. so now it's like now you may want to make a bad choice you might want to text that ex so it's like <laughs> for me it's like just literally having very honest conversations with myself when I engage in any form of entertainment social interactions yeah. places just I'm going I'm like how did that make me feel yeah. you know I think that's a huge part of self-care too it's like sometimes social media and stuff puts so much emphasis on like the cutesy parts of it yeah. the bubble baths and the masks and it's like that is a part of it but I think it's also just like that check-in that you have with it's yourself. a huge piece like, of that yeah you go to an in, a social interaction and maybe you don't feel the best afterwards just saying why do I feel this way mm-hmm. now that I've left this environment? Yeah. Or w- was it the people? Was it the music? Was it the smells? Like what caused me to feel the way that I'm feeling right now? Yeah. I think that's so huge because then that determines how how you're spending your energy. Like yeah. I think that's such a huge part of the self-care conversation of like what are you consuming with your eyes, your ears, your mouth, like where are you putting yourself energetically? Like all of that is a part of self-care as well. So I think those check-ins are huge Yeah, and it's definitely like a process. Like, I don't think it's like turn off all these parts of yourself just to start. It's just like, no, just come as you are and just be committed to checking in with yourself and tweaking as you go along. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100. And I don't think that anyone can just turn everything off. If you do that, you're, it is overwhelming. It's overwhelming. So you're not, <laughs> I tried, it's like, I'm just I tried it too. Watching everything. <laughs> I'm not listening to any music anymore. <laughs> and I was like, what? That lasted for like a month. I was yeah, like, I'm, I'm done. Like, this is too boring. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, even with TV, like I used to love me some Real Housewives of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, y'all just be acting out and doing the most. I just don't like that representation. I'm like, Mm -hmm. no, thank you. But it is really interesting from a psychological perspective, a social perspective to just see how people who you perceive have everything that they could ever want and need. And Mm -hmm. they still find reasons to be unhappy. So many reasons. She's like, (laughs) what? (laughs) So it's like, if they can't make it, who am I? (laughs) Right. So, yes, definitely checking in, paying attention, how things are making you feel, Mm -hmm. even the thought processes that you have processes, (laughs) even the thought process that you have when you walk away from certain people, Mm -hmm. conversations, setting, whatever it is. Does it feel in alignment? Yes. Does it feel good? Does it feel like it's something that you can continue to do or is it something that you want to change? And I feel like we underestimate the power that we hold that are we underestimate the power that change holds and we yes. underestimate the fact that we can change mm-hmm. things just because you've done something the same for the last 20 years right. doesn't mean that you have to do it in the next minute yep. you literally can not choose that if yep. you don't want to there's a lot of people who do have the privilege not everyone has the privilege of doing that but for those of you who do, just recognize that you do have the power to just be like, uh, maybe not today. Maybe you'll turn down going out to the mm-hmm. club because you want to just kind of sit in and read or yeah. whatever, you know, but always check in, always like lean into that power of choice. And I think as long as you do those two things and um, also keep your faith, pray and ask for guidance and direction, as long as you do those things, I think you will end up where you want to totally. eventually be. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Yeah, well, thank you. Well, shoot, I thought we, I thought it was over, <laughs> but look, look, what can we drop next? <laughs> I feel like this literally could just be a, a super long, long conversation. It so could. <laughs>
it could oh well, this was so nourishing for me i'm so grateful you. that you and i thank met you so yes much. yes thank you so much so can you let our people know where to find you i know you yes. said it that was like mid episode right? now but <laughs> please let everyone know where they can find you so they yeah. can keep up so um you can find me always at soulbeautychat.com that's how you can find out about any of the faith infused resources or workshops that i have um, you can also find about find out about my podcast, which is Soul Beauty Chat as well, available on iTunes, Anchor, all of the major um, listening sh- places. <laughs> and um, you can also, if you're interested in joining the Facebook community where there is Bible studies and workshops, you can do that by um, also signing up for the newsletter on my Um, website. And when you sign up, you also get access to the self-care toolkit, which is a guide that I created actually in conjunction with a few of my friends who are also self-care advocates and they all have different like industries, but I featured them on an episode of my podcast. And um, we were just all talking about our self-care practices. So we made like a collective guide. So you can download that and get access to the monthly newsletter and to stay up to date with everything that's happening in the community awesome yeah. well dang girl you are a wealth of knowledge <laughs> that and also her youtube channel oh, yes, um, <laughs> which is like a vlog yeah. style now right yep. yeah it's a vlog style um she keeps it so real please please go check it out because yeah. i was i just felt so comfortable with her coming over too i'm like okay this girl i i get it i get it she's normal a weird introvert like me (laughs) exactly (laughs) (laughs) yeah because you you really talk about your journey you talk about even just you know working with your therapist Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i love that so much i love just meeting people eye to eye and i i don't love pedestal approaches and so i love that the fact that you're so open so uh i can't say thank you enough this has been amazing Thank you. I'm so honored. I appreciate it. (laughs) All right, everyone. So thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Everyday Intentions podcast. We'll catch you next time. Take care.